I talk to so many women in our community who feel just a little uncomfortable around sales or just promoting their products and their services. And trust me, I would know because I used to be one of them and I was in sales. So I feel you. If that's you, I know how that feels. If you're going to get your message out there in the world, though, you are going to have to sell. If you're going to make the impact that you know you're meant to make and it doesn't have to feel inauthentic or icky to do so. I firmly believe that. I was teaching a group of fellow entrepreneurs about just strategy and, and kind of like how we how we go about promoting our event specifically and what we've done in order to sell it out every year. And I, as I was sharing it, I realized that this is actually something that could be applied to anything you're selling. So I thought, why not share it on the podcast? So I'm going to share not only the promo strategy that we use, and it's super, super simple, but how I believe you can absolutely sell without feeling salesy. tuning in today. I am so grateful to have this time with you. I love my favorite thing in the world is when you screenshot where you are listening and I get to see whether I'm on a run with you or in the car with you. So keep sharing that stuff and keep tagging me. It's super, super fun. I know I listen to podcasts in all of the places, airplanes, on hikes. So it's always super fun to see where in the world I'm getting to travel. Um, And today I wanted to, I want to keep this one kind of short and sweet, but just kind of download for you a part of a talk that I was giving at actually our event love program, which you've probably heard me mention if you've listened to the podcast for a while. And so I was talking to this group of fellow entrepreneurs specifically about how we have successfully grown and sold out our Powerhouse Women event for three years in a row. And this year, we're actually aiming to double the size of last year's event. So we set some pretty ambitious goals and we have a really long lead time between when tickets go on sale and when the event happens. And something that happens a lot with, especially those of you, if you have events or if you have anything that you have like a long launch period for, you probably can relate that at some point you're just like sick of talking about your stuff. You're sick of like asking people to buy. You're sick of saying like, hey, did you see this? Did you check out the link yet? So I know like for me, I have really had to do a complete overhaul of how I view sales, especially now having my own business because sales are literally the lifeblood of your business. Like if you have a business, you're not selling stuff. You are, you don't have a business actually. That's, it's kind of an oxymoron. So I, I talked to a lot of women who feel a lot like I did in the past, which is, you know, I actually love to buy, ask my husband, I love to buy stuff, but I don't love the experience of feeling like I'm being sold to. So we're not going to get deep into the psychology of sales. I think this actually could probably be broken into a few different podcast episodes all on the topic of sales. But since I was just sharing this promotion strategy, which does absolutely tie back to sales, I was just sharing it at this event love conference. I thought it would be valuable to share with all of you as well, because If nothing else, you're going to really start to see the inside of how we go about promoting the Powerhouse Women event, which we'll start talking about really, really soon. And I definitely think if you listen for it, you can find a tie-in to whatever it is that you offer, your products, your services, and how you can apply this. So I think the, the first thing to know is, you know, you are your own PR. Even if you pay and you actually do public relations, like that's a factor of your marketing strategy, you are your own PR. At the end of the day, if you're selling something, you will probably get tired of talking about it at some point. And if you've never had that subtle like thought in your mind that you might be annoying people with how much you're sharing about something, you just might not be sharing it enough. 
Like if you've never had that thought, you probably could up your promotion and talk about your business and your services even more because the truth is not every person hears or consumes every piece of content that we put out there. They don't read every email. They don't listen to every single Instagram story we do. So first and foremost, I think we need to know that no one is seeing and hearing everything that we do. You're going to get to a point where you probably feel like you're annoying people. But how do you keep yourself and other people excited about, you know, just to even hear about what it is that you're doing without having to just keep repeating, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, get your ticket, did you register? How do you keep people excited and how do you keep yourself excited to keep it on people's radar without having to just say, buy it, buy now. And this is where the talk that I did and the strategy that I gave really comes into play. Because when I thought about it, how we've approached the process of of promoting Powerhouse Women as an event, it really boils down to this idea that we create mini launches within a big launch. So I'm going to be sharing about this from an event standpoint, but again, you can fill in the blank with your own product and service and let me, you know, I would love to hear afterward, like what you get out of it and and how you're going to apply this to your to your business too. So when it comes to the event, you know, last year we opened tickets in January. This year we're going to open them in February and then the event is in September. So that's like a good eight or nine month lead time to be talking about one thing and to be having one call to action, which is buy your ticket, right? So that's the action that we want people to take. But oftentimes with events, especially there are so many things within the event experience that could become a mini launch or an announcement that you aren't utilizing as such. So what do I mean by this? I'm going to kind of give you an inside glimpse of the Powerhouse Women strategy and how we promote the events. And again, I want you to be listening from the standpoint of your business. How would you use this to promote your e-course or your products, your services? So when it comes to the event, you know, it's pretty straightforward what it is. It's a one day conference, you know, a Friday night pre-party and a one day all day conference. Um, You know, we share who it's for. We share the speakers. There's but there's all these little elements that essentially could become something that we quote unquote launch or announce as we lead up to the event. One of them being You know, we typically have anywhere from five to seven different speakers that speak at the event. So one way I could approach it is I could just announce the event. I can announce the date, the location, give you the whole speaker lineup all in one shot. Or what I do and what keeps it fun and and fresh for me and also I think for our audience is a lot of times I'll take elements of the event And I'll actually drip those out as like a mini launch. So last year, I want to say we announced the speakers in like May or June. And I made a big deal about like, hey, next week, you're going to hear who the speakers are. And if you have multiple speakers or like, you know, this could be, again, just relate it to your own business. You you can actually even create each of those. I could do each of those speakers as a separate launch. So what I did this year is I interviewed each speaker on the podcast. So it gave me another reason to say, Hey, you know, powerhouse women event, but today we're focusing on this particular speaker and here's some of the value they're going to be giving you at the event. So I took one little element, one singular speaker, and I turned that into something that I could promote that week or that day. And in the back of people's minds, they're hearing powerhouse women event, powerhouse women event. But I'm not just showing up online and saying, buy your ticket. I'm saying, oh my gosh, I can't wait for you to meet this speaker. This is one of the seven amazing women you're going to hear from. And here's what I've learned from this person and what they're going to share with you. So creating mini launches could really be anything. This year, we've actually been on the search for the perfect venue and we haven't selected it yet. So we probably will have it selected by the time you hear this, but you'll start to see on social media, we'll actually announce and make like a big deal out of selecting our venue. 
So there's all these little things that can turn into mini launches. Last year, just to give you a couple of other um, examples of how we did this, was we announced, we really did a big like surprise for announcing our first ever pajamas and Prosecco kickoff party. We did a fun photo shoot. We got all this great content. So again, I could have just rolled all these details out at one time, but you want to think about this as how can you take little elements and give people value along the way to keep them hearing about your brand, hearing about your product or service, and to keep it at the top of their mind. So my goal with an event is to create so much excitement And I'm genuinely excited, so it's coming from a a place where people can feel that from me, where they finally get to the point where they're like, okay, I've just got to be there. If for no other reason, because this chick seems real excited about what's happening. And that's always the goal, is to get people to have that feeling like, wow, I've got to be in that room and I've got to bring like my girlfriends too. So I want you to think about this principle when it comes to selling. How can you create many little things to sell or launch or announce that tie back to the thing that you give, you know, the value that you give and the thing that you're trying to get people to buy into? And how can you do that in a way that feels authentic to you? Because truly for me, I love a good surprise. That's why it comes across authentically because I actually really get excited about all these little details. But maybe for you, you really love teaching. So maybe you take, you know, some elements of what you sell and what you do and you give it as content in the way that you're teaching and you're giving just a little lesson that day on one specific topic that gives people a taste of what they would get if they buy your program or if they hire you or if they come and see you for services. There are so many different ways that this can be applied. But I think when when we think about finding authentic ways to show our excitement and show how we give value. That's how we take sales and we don't even feel like we're selling anymore because we're honestly, what we're selling is the excitement of what it is that we offer instead of just asking people for that transaction. So I would love to know if this helps, if you find that this is something you already do in your business or if you are going to incorporate this, especially if you have a different kind of business, not an event. I would really love to hear if you plug into the the Facebook community, we could start a thread and a whole conversation sharing ideas of how to apply this exact idea to any kind of business. Because I truly believe this is something that can be applied no matter what it is that you are promoting. And I think that For those of you that don't feel super confident around sales, when you start to think of it this way and start to genuinely find things that you're excited about to keep announcing and drawing attention back to what you're selling, it just makes the whole process a whole lot easier. So I can't wait to meet you. Plug into the Facebook community. You're going to find a link right in the show notes. And I can't wait to meet you there. (laughs) 